perhaps forms basis of today's conversation. We're focusing on the state of affairs in Rwanda. Joined in studio, Jimmy Hedy, yes. who is a human rights activist. Thank you so much for making time. Welcome to Bottom Line Africa. Thank you very much for having me. Well, we're also joined by Ambassador James Kimonyo um, from the Rwandan High Commissioner right here in Kenya. Thank you, Ambassador, for making time and welcome to Bottom Line Africa. Thank you so much. Well, let's go directly into it. I'll begin with you, Jimmy, yes. Eddie. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Rwanda has been on the spotlight and many groups of activism have actually said that um, suppressing of opposition in that particular country is rife. What do you have to say about this? Uh, I can say that uh, actually after uh, Kagame became the president, uh, it was a good thing that he became the president during the time that Rwanda needed leadership, of course, to unite the people. But after that, something went amiss, especially into allowing freedom of expression and uh, the space for civil society and even opposition. Kagame, after 10 years of his presidency, he decided now to make use of the law in Rwanda to oppress the people. It is more difficult to speak in Rwanda as, as, as to other parts of the country. Actually, it's like the time of Moi, when Moi was the president. When I was a, I, I, when I was a young boy and uh, I, I could mention Moi, it could be so difficult because we could be beaten, tortured, uh, treated in a very in, in, immune, in, an immune way. So I, I, unless he allows that kind of freedom, I think Rwanda is still not in terms of... Uh, allowing those kind of spaces. Well, so. even if you say that, yeah, yeah. Um, Ingabire, who is one of the main opposition leaders, mm. was actually released um, a alongside 2,100 um, political prisoners. What does this say about your claims that Rwanda is actually suppressing the opposition? Uh, of course, uh, my claim is that there's no freedom of expression at all, at all. Because when Diana declared her interest, you realize that even her mother, who, who was not even uh, running or uh, 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 deputy uh, president of her, was also arrested. The family members, including the sister, were also arrested. Yeah? So I don't understand why the family were involved into Diana's own interests of political space. Okay. Yes. Perhaps we can forward that particular question to Ambassador James Kimonyo, the Rwandan High Commissioner to Kenya. A lot of accusations have been mentioned, not just by Jimmy Eddy, but a couple of other media outlets, that the opposition is being frustrated in Rwanda. What do you have to say about these claims? Thank you. First of all, let me uh, say that um, the timing of the accusations uh, is very wrong uh, because uh, this is the time when we are talking about Rwanda that is so developed in terms of improving the lives of our people but also promoting uh, the rule of law and allowing Rwandans of all walks of life to exercise their fundamental human rights. But before we proceed with this conversation, I would want to ask Jimmy and, and, and the rest to really, if they want to objectively deal with this matter, first of all, retract what they have been posting in terms of insulting our president. His Excellency President Paul Kagame is a president who was elected by Rwandans through a vote that is provided by the Constitution. He's a legitimate leader of Rwanda. This country, Kenya, has a lot to do with Rwanda in terms of business and other partnerships. If you talk to Kenyans who are doing business in Rwanda and who are employed in Rwanda, and like many other countries in this sub-region, Rwanda is the country that has opened up not only for Rwandans, but for foreigners, including Kenyans, to come and do business. They will tell you, I've seen a, a, a very big number of good people in Kenya, 
uh, with a Twitter handle, uh, hashtag uh, Kenya Rwanda Relations, they are talking about the successes and things they have done. They are there. They work there every day. They talk to Rwandans. Rwandans are free. You can talk to anybody on the street. They will tell you how happy they are, including uh, the exercising their rights in terms of freedom of expression. Let me tell you, this is a paradox. When I hear people like Jimmy talking about uh, stiffering uh, free speech, uh, freedom of assembly and others, you cannot do that as a government or the president while at the same time you are promoting the use of internet. So you are trying to ensure access to information by all citizens. I don't think we can, you can compare Rwanda with any other country in the region. In terms of rolling out fiber optic cable, and now we are at the phase of the last mile whereby we want each and every institution and people to have access to internet. People who are unhappy with anything, they can tweet the president, they can write anything on Facebook. You know, you can't talk about stifling freedom of expression when you are striving to actually connect every citizen. When President Kagame became the president, how many local FM radios do we have? How many television outlets do we have? How many do we have today? Can Jimmy tell you? Can he give you, can he give you the figures? Because you cannot be allowing people to open up private radios and television stations, including some Kenyans who have done so, I think even you know, standard the group has business in Rwanda. And that's why we're having this discussion. So please, we have, we have to put this in, in the context. So you know, talking about the case of, of an individual among millions of Rwandans, we need to really look at it from the, 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 its context. You know, we should not mix up the fact that someone is undergoing trial and try to make that as an umbrella accusation for the entire system, for the entire government and the president, that he does not allow freedom of expression. You just heard in the, the clip before that uh, the, the opposition leader, uh, Habineza Frank, just joined the parliament. Allow me to cut you short. And the of the government. We, we want to highlight on the state yeah. of the opposition outfit in your country. As we well know, um, President Paul Kagame has orchestrated the release of 2,100 um, prisoners um, with little explanation. Remember, um, Ingabire was actually um, held in custody a while back. Now, the latest um, that has actually fueled this particular conversation, irrespective of the economic growth in that particular country, is the arrest of Diane Ruigara. This obviously has a lot to do with um, her being a leading critic of President Paul Kagame, not forgetting that she also wanted to vie in the 2017 presidential election. Perhaps highlight on this particular point on why she was arrested. Did it have a fact to do with the point that she wanted to compete against Paul Kagame, who has been in power since 1994? Let me tell you something. Uh, and and I, I believe you yourself your guest and many viewers understand that Diane Ruigara did not pose any threat, did not have any capacity to challenge President Paul Kagame or any other candidate for that matter. She did not pose any formidable challenge whatsoever. What she had to do, like many other candidates, was to follow the law. Because electoral fraud is a criminal offense. You see, I understand where Jim comes from as an activist. But when you want to look at that particular case, you may even want to go into the merits of the case itself. Jim, who is in the studio today, cannot substantiate what he's saying. Because Rigara, Diane Rigara, faces the charges of fraud. She was given all opportunities to defend her case in the court of law. Even as we speak today, she went to the court. So me and Jim and yourself and another person to engage into a discussion, a debate of an ongoing case, why don't we allow the law to take its own course? You know? And, and once the case is concluded, then the people can discuss. 
But at the moment, I think I'm dealing with an activist who may want to say anything, whether it is substantiated or not. But at the moment, you are given a uh, free air time by KTN, you can say anything. But what I'm saying is that there is a case against this lady. And to put into context, she did not pose any challenge in terms of political competition with the president. Because look at the president's track record and look at this young lady. And this is the way you, you put it, it is as if people woke up and put people into prison. There is a process. There is a law that has to be followed. Even those who have been erased, you are talking about erased uh, uh, without any explanation. It is a, 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 you know, a, a law that, uh, that is used to release people. You don't just wake up and say, randomly, 2,000 people are going to be released. And you see, people even have short memories. It's not the first time that, th that this has happened. Even 2003, I remember, about 20,000 people who had, who had participated in the genocide against the Tutsi were released through presidential pardon, but there was a process to follow before they were released. So it's not the first time. This is an ongoing activity. It's just that uh, maybe Victor Ngabidi and, uh, and the Kizitu happened to, to be popular because of the media precisely. But otherwise, it's, it's, it's a common thing. And so Diana Rigara was arrested because of electoral fraud. She had to follow the law. There are people who actually came out and say, my identity card was used, I was never contacted, I never saw this lady, but I was surprised to see my name on the list of the sponsors. Okay, Ambassador and Kimonyo. You see, having, if you say, okay, you can, yes. Well, having said that, let's kindly give Jimmy Eddie a chance to actually say what he thinks about um, this particular case and yes. also responding to what Ambassador de Kimonyo had to say. De definitely. You know, when I came to the studio, I didn't come to discuss the economy of Rwanda. I am so aware that the economy of Rwanda is doing much better than, than Kenya. The specific reason that, I, that brought me here was the issue facing Diana Rugara and the family. This year alone, the United Nations is celebrating uh, 70 years of uh, uh, universal declaration of human rights. And you, if you go to Article 12, it states very clearly that no one shall be subjected to arbitrary interference with his privacy family, home, or correspondence, nor to attacks upon his honor and reputation. Everyone has the right to the protection of the law against such interference of, or attacks. The ambassador is not telling Kenyans and the people watching uh, today the truth. We all know that the, the family, the father of uh, Diana and the president of Rwanda were very close friends. And the, uh, Diana's father was bankrolling the president of Rwanda for many years during his campaigns. Until now, the, when, when, the, when, when, when the relationship got uh, sour, the friendship got sour, the, the, the father died mysteriously without any, uh, any, any, any good reason. Now, the president of uh, Rwanda went ahead and started now economically dismantling the family. They have taken so much from the family, actually almost 98% of what their father used to have through uh, the legal process in terms of uh, oh, tax evasion, in terms of all these things. Let, let's talk about that legal process. Yes. We cannot fail to ascertain that, of course, the legal process must be followed in this particular case. Yes. And that's what Ambassador is saying. Mm. She has been charged with fraud and tax evasion. What was the, what was the case against the mother? Because she was the one vying. What, was the, 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 what did the mother do? What did the sisters do? What did all these family members who are part of her did? Are they also in, to, in terms of fraud or all these other things? These are allegations. We saw in Uganda when Bobby Wine, uh, the member of parliament, uh, also de 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 declared a war against the president of Uganda. Okay, okay. And, and uh, he was charged with treason. Okay. Eh? So the, the, all these allegations are just allegations. Well, well let, yeah. let's stick to the rule of law and especially what we're talking about in Rwanda. Ambassador James Kimonyo, who's a Rwandan High Commissioner, you have heard what Jimmy Eddy is saying about this accusations simply being allegations, perhaps um, to actually put a stamp of authority. as this simply allegations? And you can also enunciate on the rule of law and the judicial arm of government in that particular country, which has been put under the monitor as being uh, 
tool to actually um, pursue the interest of the president of that particular country, Paul Kagame. Is this true? And if not, kindly ascertain why. Uh, first of all, I feel so pity uh, for your, your guest, honestly. I, I don't know whether he prepared himself for this uh, particular show. It's a very important matter that we are discussing. Because you, you can't be sitting, uh, th this is a very important outlet in my view. KTN News is just not a, a tabloid. You, you, you can't say someone was bankrolling the president. You don't have any proof whatsoever. Please, Jimmy. Now, and then you contradict yourself. Because Diane Rigara is charged of uh, electoral fraud. I, I just said it. And, and the case is, uh, is ongoing. The mother is charged with a different case. Because there is no any stupid uh, human being who, who has uh, a legal mind who can simply round up a mother and put her in prison because the sister tried to run for president. Come on. There is a case against Adeni Rigara. The prosecutors believe that they have a strong case against her. It is presented the court of law. It's being, it is, it's following the, 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 the process. So we should wait for the logical conclusion of that case. Now, in terms of the, of the rule of law, as, as you asked uh, uh, your question, let me say something. You know, this country started from a very low base in everything. In 1994, all the institutions, infrastructure, people killed, we started from a very, very low base. After 20 years, 24 years, we have made progress in many, many years, including the judiciary. We have created the National Law Reform Commission to review our laws every time we think something has to be changed. And in that process, we have been able to, to, to make, to benchmark our laws to other laws and make sure that we have a very effective legal system that will provide rule of law to the people of Rwanda. And that's what is happening. Sh should we say that uh, we are done with that, with the reforms or transformation of the legal system? No. Like any other sector, we are still making progress and we want to make sure that where we think there are shortfalls or gaps, we fix them. That's uh, why we, we have the, 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 the law, uh, National Law Reform Commission. So, and, and, and you see, we should not uh, talk about this from abstract. There are real people, human beings who live in this country called Rwanda. They will tell you. If you look at the global rankings, Gallup and other, other rankings, they show you that, in fact, more than 85% of Rwandans believe in their legal system. More than 98% of Rwandans believe in the military. More than 95% of people of Rwanda believe in the police. So more than 99% of people believe in the government. So, and, and these are not the statistics created by myself or my government. They are statistics generated by the credible international entities that conduct such research. So I, I think what, what Jim is saying, somehow we, if we may want to even uh, uh, join this show and allow him to do more research. But I can tell you runners are very happy with what is happening. Well, thank you, Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador, for sharing your sentiments in regards to this particular case that is facing one of the fierce critics of President Paul Kagame. We're talking about Diane Rigara, who was actually facing the law courts today, was accustomed or was taken to the law courts today in that particular case where she has been charged with fraud, electoral fraud and tax evasion. We're also joined in studio by Jimmy Eddy, who's a human rights activist. Thank you so 